So you can you see your electron beam energy constancy the same as you would before. You have your eight chambers, and it's going to track the dose underneath those simulated uh, depths, those thicknesses in your plate. You can see you have your devices on the side. We have all of these different all of these different devices that we could QA on. What active tasks you have that are coming up with this? Uh, you can of course collapse these in any way you want to make the screen. You know this is really nice for people who don't have you know large 24-inch monitors on everything. But uh, you can see for the electron beam energy constancy, there's a you can have your your description of your task put in here. You can edit, add notes to these. You can have your setup notes. Um, I'm hoping at some point the software developers will implement maybe some place where you can actually import a picture of what this looks like set up on the couch so there's not a whole lot of confusion. Um, you know, the goal of all of this is to improve consistency between machines in your facility, you know, to make sure that you're, you're doing the same thing for each machine uh, to try to keep your data as consistent as possible. But um, you know, as far as the connectability, I, I went ahead and uh, attached a star track to the network somewhere else in this hospital just to show you that you can. Uh, this is actually online right now. I'm sitting at my desktop in dosimetry, and this is uh, this is actually attached to the network back at the other machine in the other end of the department. And you know, the software sees it just fine. There's no problem with the thing communicating through networks. You can connect to it. Um, you see, it's once you've connected, you can also see here. Let me disconnect from this. You can see this is nice uh, from some of the previous versions. When your detector is uh, attached to the software, you can see the little green light pops up to tell you that there is a Star Trek connected. And of course, you can click that box to determine which one it is. If you have more than one, maybe it's you've got more than one matrix that you want to use. Uh, and similar buttons to what you're used to seeing in OmniPro IMRTQA. You can do your background correction do a 20-second background compensation. And unfortunately, I do not have this under the beam right this moment, so I can't collect any data. But I think what's nice about this for the morning QA is we follow the regular, you know, your very and warm-up procedure where you do your uh, 9, 12, 16, 20, and 6 electrons. You follow that by your 6 and 18 photon. And this actually mirrors that those tests, so you're running 100 MU on each one of those beams. But there's a button here that you can share your measurements between each of these tests. So when I take a, uh, say, a 6, a six MeV electron, uh, I acquire this data. Any other place where that data can be used, such as in the electron output constancy, these fields will auto-populate with the measurement that was taken in the first field. Uh, same thing for the profile constancy. These will automatically populate uh, when you acquire your data. Or if you like, you can import data here for your baselines if you're not sitting in front of a computer. But we have all of those things, all of your typical morning beam things that you're going to want to do, your optical distance indicator, lasers, all of your MV safety stuff, uh, audiovisual, your prime alerts, uh, wedges. You know that's very nice for your wedges because not only does it share with the profiles, but when you we run a uh, a 10 EDW and a 60 EDW every morning with six and 18 respectively. When you acquire your 6x open field, the without wedge automatically populates. So the only thing you have to do is go back and run that wedge, uh, and it will calculate your wedge factor for you there. Your Qualitative tests, you can have those as pass-fail. If you want to analyze them every morning, you can change the test over to use the MLC module and do a quantitative instead of qualitative. Uh, things that were you know, not typically in, you know, in the OmniPro Advanced, you can add things like your CeraVent temperature. If you're still pouring blocks, um, you know, we have a, a check to make sure that our Mosaic Namer PC is on in the morning. You know, there, sometimes the thing cuts itself off, and so it's just one more check that the morning warm-up person will go through to make sure that your department is ready to go. Um, other things I've not added in here yet are SF6 pressure, water temperature, water pressure, things you know for the machine. And of course, adding these is just as easy as going in, modifying your template, and just add a task, set a baseline, and it will track it for you uh, just as long as you want to go. All right, let's see here. Let me go back to the my QA admin. So you can see that I have uh, two entire. This is. I hope my neighbors don't mind me showing their stuff. <laughs> we, uh, I have you know, two entire departments built here with all of their uh, different equipment in them. Each one of the accelerators has got his own thing. This is showing me that the Star Trek is connected back at our 2100 EX. Uh, I've got the big bore 
set up, you know, that room set up. I've got the treatment planning system set up, and of course everything mirrored at the uh, at the other facility. And so I think it's really nice. You can input your calibration factors uh, just like you normally would for your OmniPro IMRT Plus or your OmniPro Advance. So it's, uh, everything works really well uh, in this, and I'm I'm eager to get it uh, installed and and actually start testing it out on a, on a daily basis and see how this works and see what data I get with this that I did not get with the last piece of software. So what do you think? More, less, or is that, I don't know how we're doing on time. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good, James. Um, Dave, if you didn't have anything else to show, I was just going to show a couple brief things and then we could move on to questions. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll go ahead and change the uh, screen back to me. and. Um, I'd like to kind of just briefly share a couple things which James uh, touched on, um, and, and one of those things was the cockpit. So James kind of showed how um, basically you're able to go ahead and uh, take all your measurements, um, and like you said, he wants to maybe look at some data from his office, um, and maybe he has he's walking around somewhere, he's in uh, his administrator's office, and uh, he wants to take a look on his iPad and look at the results. Uh, well, all he has to actually do is go ahead and... Uh, open up a web browser, as I have right here, uh, on any computer or either in your uh, Android phone or iPhone or anything like that. And you can look at all the different um, Linux that you have inside of your system. Um, I have a CT Sim here. I have a couple different Linux. I even have a Proteus One, a Proton Accelerator for the one-room system. So I have all my different tests that have been done right here. And I just click on um, one of the different sections of QA and look at the test uh, and see I had a safety test. Uh, I had a dosimetric test. I can look at uh, profile constancy for 15x, uh, look at what passed, what failed, look at all the different results. Um, same thing for chief of physics sign-off. If I want to look uh, weekly and see is my physicist, uh, you know, the chief signed off on all the different tests uh, for regulatory purposes, you can do that. If I want to go and then look at any kind of um, trending, I can look at data trending as well. I just click on trend analysis. I go to whatever I want to trend. Uh, I would go here and then look at all my different results. So I have trending for output, uh, things like that. Uh, any test except for pass or fail is not going to be trended. Uh, as far as patient QA, if I want to look at uh, what patients I have in my system that I still need to QA, I would just click on patients. And this lets me know, okay, what patients do I have in my queue? Uh, which patients have been approved? Okay, this one's ready, is approved. You can go ahead and treat Minnie Mouse here. Um, what matrix was used, what kind of case was it, uh, when was the approval date, and then look at any kind of approval notes which is happening right here. Uh, okay, so I say I have uh, a patient that still needs to be treated. Uh, I have uh, 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 Snuffy Smith here. I could go back in my software when I'm ready to do my QA. I've already done my uh, machine QA for the day, whatever test I had here. Uh, I looked and I said, okay, all my tests are done. And uh, maybe I just have a monthly QA test template that's coming up pretty soon. It tells me how long. And I have 12 tests that are due for monthly QA. All right. I can go then and go to my QA patients. And inside of patients, I would go ahead and look at my uh, long list of patients, which I have to queue. I say, okay, Mickey Mouse is done. I want to and open up uh, Snuffy Smith. I open up Snuffy. Uh, I go ahead and select uh, whichever uh, planes I want to look at. So I just bring in my plane here and just uh, bring in the same one here. Uh, click on a gamma analysis. Within one click, I get my entire analysis right here. I can look at uh, profiles. Uh, I can look at uh, histogram, look at isodose lines. All my results are right here, and when I'm ready to go ahead and approve it, I can approve and then print out a report for my record and verify. So you can see everything is very easy uh, to, to navigate between. Uh, we have the fast track mode as well here if you want to go ahead and take the quick measurements. Uh, MyQA admin, um, data import, uh, options, user administration. Everything is very easy to navigate and uh, the workflow is very fluid. Uh, so if uh, now I'd like to open up uh, for anyone who has any questions, would be happy to uh, go ahead and answer uh, your questions. What are the options for signing off on results and or reminders to sign off on test? So when you actually need to go ahead and sign off on a test, inside of the software, once I've completed a test, and I can actually show you this in the software, when I've uh, gone to a test I need to do, I'd go into my QA machines and look at my large template of tests right here. Uh, whenever I need to sign off on something, 
if it's a, a test that I need to hook up the device on, I'd go ahead and finish. And once it's saved those uh, tests right there, then I get uh, little check marks when they've been done. So uh, let's see, I want to look at just a pass or fail. I've done an entire QA. And then there's my finish button here. Until I hit finish, it's still going to say that these tests are due right here. It's going to show 12 out of 12 or 11 out of 12, but it's still going to show this as an active task. And it's going to show what's uh, upcoming as well. So when I click finish, that's when it's going to go ahead and save that inside the database, and it, it's saved for good. You know, this is done, it's complete, and you can do a report if you need to. After you've done that, then you can go in the test repository right here. You can click on whatever results you need. You can filter by what kind of uh, LENAC it was, what kind of test, or you can look at uh, what, you know, like I have a chief of physics sign off. I can filter down to that, and then produce this report of each time the chief physicist signed off on uh, those set of tests right there. Okay, now we got a couple other questions. Uh, let's just see right here. Um, let's see, we looked at that one. Would you mind showing a bit more about the TG142 tools for imaging QA? Also, do any of your QA tools allow you to import MLC log files from the LENAC? So right now, inside of our uh, MLC QA, if I was to go here um, and then click on test run, and I was going to try and do uh, maybe some of the imaging QA uh, I have to do for um, for that right there, I would just open up my uh, imaging plugin and look at a Combeam CT. I'd select my CAT fan, go ahead and load the files. It's going to load all the individual slices. And then it's going to show them right here. It's going to show what passed, what failed. It's going to give me my results. I click OK. And then it's actually going to save those results right here. Um, as far as MLC QA, um, if I was looking at that, uh, let's see, I want to look at a uh, MLC QA, I would go ahead and um, start my picket fence, quick start. It's then going to look at uh, wherever I have um, one of these right here. Uh, this is actually a TIFF image, but if you had an EPIT uh, image, the same thing for your picket fence. It's going to show this right here. I pick uh, my gantry angle if I want to. Uh, maybe I have a variant 120. I just say center. I see my results right here, uh, and then I say OK. So then it's going to actually then save those results, show me a pass or fail. For log files, um, log files are going to be entered into a uh, later date. I think it's going to be maybe the second release of my QA. We do have plans to go ahead and um, bring that into the software. And you can and you can enter. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can. While you're in that while you're in that imaging module, you can change your baselines, and you can you know you can do all those things. Tweak your phantom. You can move the ROIs around where you want them, and have them fixed, and uh, you know, maybe change the you know perhaps if you want three percent contrast instead of two. You you can manually change those baselines in there to to meet your needs uh, for your particular machine and imaging system.